Birmingham has more canals than Venice. The biggest is a Grand Union canal stretching 137 miles. Hello, he's got the easy job. Today I'm going to be cruising Birmingham in search of some stunning curries. The show will take us from the curry capital to the length and breadth of India as we seek out the origins of the dish as well as the spices used within it. Welcome from Birmingham to Bombay. Coming up in the show, we get hot and spicy with a couple of Madras curries. And I'll be making that classic mulligatawny soup, but with a twist and with the help of some locals. For my Anglo-Indian recipe today, I've come to a restaurant called Milan. It's a Hindi word which basically means get together. Let's go and see what our chefs got us together today. What we're going to do is, we're going to dry roast all these spices which I've got here together for you. This is the whole coriander. Coriander, okay. It's about a teaspoon I've taken. Lovely. About four green cardamom. Yeah. Say about four to five whole red chilies. A star anise. A teaspoon of black peppercorns. Mm -hmm. Half a teaspoon of fennel seeds. I've got half a teaspoon of cloves. Two sticks of cinnamon some cumin, say about a teaspoon, and I'm going to dry roast these along with freshly grated coconut. Wonderful. They're going to be dry now I've had to make some serious <laughs> notes in my book to get the right balance of ingredients and spices because I need to replicate this recipe over in India. Once this uh, roasting is done, we have to cool down this mixture, we add some water into it and we make a paste. Eventually what you're going to get is a paste which is like this. So this is all the whole chilies that we spoke about. It's starting to smell fantastic. It does. And this is, this is why this, this dish is supposed to be one of the spiciest, uh, not only as per the heat is concerned, but also the balance of the spice is concerned. But that's just one part of the dish, isn't it? This is just the one part of the dish. Second part, I've got some chopped onions, chopped tomatoes, ginger and garlic paste. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fry these onions in, in oil till they're golden and crisp and then goes in the ginger garlic and the tomatoes till we reach a mixture of onion tomato spices which looks like this. Next stage? Next stage is going to be the prawns, the main ingredient of the dish. The dish is prawn chetinad, the chetinad spices, the base of the onions and tomatoes and here goes the marinated prawns which have been marinated with lemon juice and turmeric. Hang on, lemon juice turmeric, lovely. Yes, turmeric yeah. is very essential when we cook fish dishes. It, it makes it antiseptic, okay. that's, that's how it's considered. And then generic spices, the chili powder, salt, turmeric, a bit of tamarind to, yeah. make, to give that tartness to the dish where it, it balances out the spices again. And I've got some fresh coconut milk oh, 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 oh. and Sounds a good. generous amount of whole coriander, fresh, fresh chopped coriander. coriander. Perfect. There goes your... In goes the prawns, lovely. cook them for a couple of minutes and then add the onion spice mix. Thank you. This is the best bit about the prawns, which I feel, you know. And okay, I think it's time for us to go for the chetinad spice now. Chetinad spice coming up. So we will have to balance it out. Initially, I think two spoons and a bit of liquid right. should be good enough for us mm -hmm. to actually. So you serve how many? This this is going to serve two people. Okay, good. That's about that. Yes. Now, now the spice is cooked, the prawns are cooked and now we go for the finishing of the dish. And I'm going to use my, as my judgment on this, that looking at the dish that we have, how much of the tamarind spice. I think somewhere yeah, I think again, cooking is uh, in theory as well as, can you give me the coconut milk please? Coconut. In goes the coconut milk, brought to the simmer and then a generous amount of coriander. It smells delicious, but proof of the pudding is in the eating, as they say. Tell me what do you think about the dish now? I'm getting the heat right at the very end. That yes. sweetness up. Like this. <laughs> the heat. There's so many flavours in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> we could actually get, make it more spicier as far as the heat of the chilli is concerned. But I think the balance is so good at the moment. It, the balance is. I mean, it's just calming down now. But that pepper... <laughs> 
it's still written like a Yes, it is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you talk. I can't. <laughs> <coughs> yes. Mm. Cooling yoghurt is always helpful in these situations. It's a delicious dish and that black pepper certainly came through. But before the restaurants receive their black pepper, it all comes here to the largest spice factory in the UK. In fact, they bring in over 75 tonnes of black pepper a year and it all goes through a variety of quality checks and cleaning processes. These include sieving, de-stoning, air aspiration and yes, magnet controls. We've seen the restaurants use it, we've seen it being processed, but I want to find more about the history and the originations of the black pepper. I'm off to India. I'm in Bombay, now known as Mumbai. Now, I'm wanting to head off to Chennai, but first, I'm going to meet India's most famous chef. His name is Sanjeev Kapoor, and I hope he can tell me what I can expect when I arrive in Chennai. Chennai is down south, uh, land of pepper and uh, Madras. Chennai was called Madras earlier. There are hundreds of curries, but what is good there is uh, Tamil Nadu uh, has a very rich uh, community called Chettiyar. So, Chetanadu food, nice and spicy, uh, very full flavour, um, uh, curry leaves, you must taste them yeah. and you'll find plenty of those. Yeah, we did a Chetanadu prawn in Birmingham, so I'll see what the guys can rustle up over in Chennai for me. Oh yeah, oh, I you. love that. Love Lovely. that. Vanakam, it's a Tamil word to welcome and offer you a life of health, wealth and happiness. I'm here in Chennai formerly known as Madras. A city famous for its curry blend, thought to have been prepared in the 18th century by Indian merchants for members of the British Army. They also shipped fresh produce packed in ice, once stored in this wonderful ice house. So on that note, let's see what fresh ingredients they have at today's market. Now look at these. We've got some decent looking pomegranates here. They look quite, uh, quite juicy, to say the least. Thank you. It's probably not a great deal that they can't grow. Obviously, we've got some coconuts. Coconuts feature greatly in the cuisine around this area. More pomegranates, more different varieties of coconut melons we've got here. All these ingredients. I don't know, I get inspired despite the heat and sometimes not salubrious smells going on here. We've got some prawns just laid out. Hello, ladies. Hello. Nice fish. Nice looking fish. What's this one called? Cold Okay. How much? How much for a fish like this? Uh, 450, it's a nice price. Fresh this morning. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm supposed to barter for that. As well as a rich diet of fish, the people here enjoy eating rice, but they also enjoy a diet of coconut-based pickles, chutneys, and of course they love their spices. And as you can see, they're pretty keen fisher folk also. In fact, this has given me an idea for a recipe. What a fantastic setting to do an Anglo-Indian classic. How about, ready for it, a mulligatawny soup? Remember that old one? Yes, I'm going to give it a modern twist as well. Let's start off. First of all, let's get a pan nice and hot. A little bit of oil is going to go into the pan. Now then, the next ingredient I'm going to start off with is, of course, some onion. Chopped nice and fine. Let's start to sweat off that onion. We don't want to brown it, just gently, gently cook it, bring out all the lovely sugar and take away some of that acid that you get from the onion. The other ingredients that we have, a little bit of garlic, finely chopped and that gets placed into the pan as well. Next ingredient, of course, we need a little bit of curry powder. Not a lot, we just want to season this dish quite nice and light, sprinkle that in just a small amount. We've then got some coriander seeds. Get that lovely lemony flavour coming through in this soup. I've got a little bit of the coriander powder as well. Sweat that off. That should start to soak up some of that juice and some of that oil in the pan. If you need any more oil at this particular point when you're frying, just add a small amount. It's not a problem. Other ingredients. We have some turmeric. Turmeric. Deserved earth used quite a lot in this region and the actual name mulligitawny actually it's two words it comes from the tamil and mulligu is pepper 
and tawny means water, peppered water. That's where it got its name from, Mulagi tawny. Cook off the turmeric, then we're going to add some lovely cinnamon bark. Just a couple of pieces, followed by a little bit of cumin. If you're standing outside doing this, make sure you get it in the pan, because I've just seen most of it just blow away. <laughs> Give that a stir. That's starting to come out nice. Other ingredients, we have a little bit of sliced leek. Just finely sliced, you could dice it, just sort of cut it at an angle here. A little bit more oil. Lubricate the pan. Little celery. Keep it chunky. And a little carrot. Then I'm going to add a few tomatoes. I think the most important factor is that you cook out those spices first because you want to remove some of that grittiness that you get from the actual spices. And you also want to bring out those essential oils for all that flavour. So give that a good stab. Once you get to that stage, we're going to add some of this rice. Rice is grown within this region. In fact, for the Tamils, rice is a main staple. It's used a lot. This has been cooked. It's basmati rice, cooked until it's soft. And this is also going to act as a thickening agent for us. So a good handful of rice is going to go in there. It's going to make it quite substantial. And give that a good stir. Lovely. Then we have a little bit of ginger. Just scatter a few sprigs of ginger. There we go. It's not actually an Indian soup, as mentioned. It developed round about the British soldiers in the British Raj. And they, of course, back then wanted a soup course. <laughs> so what they did was basically had sort of a, a stock from a casserole and uh, they just took the liquid from it. The, uh, the Indian servants gave it to the soldiers and they drank this liquid, and which was you know, classed as a soup. And that's where it all derived, the molligitoni, the peppered water. Add a little bit of salt, a little bit of the pepper, keeping in keeping. And then we have some fresh stock. Now, of course, at this point, you could actually do chicken and place a little bit of chicken in this pan. But what I thought I would do is add some fish. Because as you can see and you can hear, we're in this stunning location with fishermen all around us. A couple there doing the nets. And I've got some of the fresh cash of the day. Now all I need to do is bring this up to the boil, bring it up to the simmer, let all those ingredients cook, and then I'm going to add the fish. I've got here ooh, a lovely, and it's, it's hard as a board because it's literally just come out. This is a little yellow snapper. And uh, basically, I've taken it off the bone. Nice, firm bone. We've got the skin still on. This is quite a firm skin, so I need to get that off. I'm not going to save it with the skin on. And all you need to do is basically get a sharp knife in between the flesh and the skin and work that all the way down. Just get the knife down there, look at that, and just finish that off, slice it off so that there's no fish left on the skin and you've got a totally beautiful, boneless piece of fish. That's what we're looking for here. We've cut that into a couple of slices, nice and thin, so it cooks very rapidly indeed. This is a lovely piece of fish and you can't get it any fresher. And I thought I would also throw in a fresh prawn. Look at these, absolutely beautiful. We need to add the fish. So we say last couple of minutes. We don't want to overcook the fish. We just want them nicely cooked through. With these beautiful slithers. Let's just poach that in this stock. It's going to take on the colour, it's going to take on the flavour, and it's going to add a lovely texture to it. Give it a little zest in terms of, should I say zing as opposed to zest, in terms of some lime and lemon juice. Are you hungry? Ready to eat? Yeah, hungry. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a taste. Let's bring this over now. Ladle of the soup very carefully into bowls. <laughs> it's colourful, it's tasty, fragrant. I think this is everything you want. This makes a perfect lunch dish. A little bit of prawn on the top there, a little bit of rice on the top. Look at that. With a little bit of this yogurt, place that on the top. A little mango chutney on the top of that. A few toasted almonds, a few little pistachios, a little 
fresh coriander and a little bit of apple into that. I know it sounds daft, but uh, it works really well. Right then. Okay, guys. Taste? Very good taste. Verdict? Very good. Very good. Very, good. Very, good. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> he seems to like it. <laughs> Coming up next, we pick a pepper or two and cook poolside in a Madras curry cookout. Coming up in the show, we'll be cooking our second hot and spicy Madras curry. But first, we're off to the spice lands. Pepper has been grown in India since 2000 BC. The Phoenicians and Alexander the Great brought it to Europe. The Romans used to use it as currency. In fact, it was called black gold. By the 11th century, it was the most popular spice in England. In fact, there was a guild of pepper set up called the Grossari. Today, that word we know as grocer. Black pepper not only has a huge influence on the taste of our food and internal health aspects, it also has a huge impact on the outside too. In ancient Ayurvedic treatments practiced in India, pepper is said to be good for muscular pain. Its essential oils good therapy for muscle relaxation and even good for inflamed muscles. I've come to the Radisson Blue Resort, Temple Bay in Mamapuluram, and I'm here not for a swim in the longest pool in Asia, but to meet executive chef Vijay Kumar. Right Vijay, what magnificent Madras curry are you going to do for us today? Yeah, today we are going to uh, do Madras fish curry. Fish curry. Okay, which is one of the best uh, recipes everyone really relishes here in uh, Chennai. That's uh, a big statement. It's called Madras. Madras. Well, yes. that's what I'm here for, to taste the ultimate Madras curry. We're going to start off with? Yeah, first we uh, put some oil. Yeah. Oil onto... See, uh, I have used uh, a terracotta pot to do the cooking that's, that's because the traditional that, part. yes that's the way it has been done traditionally good okay now i add a little bit of mustard okay you need some popping yeah. yeah that's it okay good. and a little bit of fenugreek fenugreek yes exactly so this fenugreek gives a beautiful uh, taste into your curry okay then a little bit of uh, curry leaves yeah okay which is a south indian uh, speciality then a little bit of salt I'm adding some onions Still for the salad. curry. Okay. Good. Traditional, yeah, mm. traditional South Indian cooking uses shallots. Yes. Okay. Predominantly, it it's, it has a very cooling effect on your body. Okay. So that's the main reason we use this. We add this also a little bit. So you've got both. You've got a mixture of onions and yes, shallots together. Yes. Exactly. Hello. If you see any any cooking uh, in uh, Indian cuisine, the color matters a lot. It's always a brownish color or yes, a red color. Yeah. It is not just because of the chili which we add. It is how much we roast the onions. Okay, get okay. a nice golden brown. Exactly. Yeah. That Bring all that sugar. Yes, that gives a lot of taste into your curries. Okay, now we add a little bit of ginger garlic paste. What percentage ginger, what garlic? Yeah, it's uh, 50, 50 equal. Kilo. Yeah, equal amount of ginger and garlic we add. You feel that the pot makes a big difference in the flavor? Yes, yes. Usually what they do is, traditionally they make it the previous day night and they just leave it on the pot. So it gives a beautiful uh, taste into your fish curry. We add green chilies. Yeah. A little bit of garlic pods. Now we add a little bit of turmeric powder little bit of uh, cumin powder or jeera powder the so called coriander powder which helps in thickening the curry yeah it's starting to get a little bit more uh, paste yes. right now then we've got then the chili powder <laughs> in the uk you mentioned madras curry and everyone knows it's going to be hot i've Ma got a feeling okay. that this one is certainly going to be hot yeah Okay. Now we add a little bit of oil. Okay. Right. Great. Right. Now we can see that the oil is floating. That means the masala is getting cooked. Okay. Okay. Now we add. And how long do you need to leave that one for? Uh, just it takes only five to seven minutes for you to Do it get gently. cooked. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Now we add the tomatoes. Now you can see the color coming up. Yes, nice. Next stage we'll be adding. Once the masala is cooked, we'll be adding tamarind pulp. 
then water and let it simmer. Okay. Okay. So now uh, we'll add the tamarind pulp. Now basically you got a, a paste for that and you just added some water or? Yeah, you get we, uh, we soak uh, fresh tamarind into a little bit of hot water yep. and we soak it for some 15-20 minutes. Then we squeeze out, now you can see yeah, the gravy being formed, you're getting the color. Looking really similar. Yeah. yeah, and you're going to have the fish which is going to dominate the... Because the fish has got quite a lot of um, flavors to... Uh, so exactly. Bite against, but swim along with, doesn't it? Yes. Because uh, you've got a lot of heat there. You've got the chili powder. You've got the chili peppers. That's quite a yes. Quite a See, mixture. the predominant uh, flavor and taste of this is going to be the sourness, which you will get it from the tomato and the tamarind combination. Lovely. And spiciness from the chili. There is a green chili and the red chili. Okay. And you'll have a mild flavor of the fish, which goes into it. Right. That's come up to the simmer. Yes. Right. Now we this? add the fish into it. Perfect. Okay. Now I've got my book and ingredients ready and waiting in the wings with Mylan's Chennai Prawn Curry. Into the pan. So you say, I'm sticking to Mylan's recipe uh, from Birmingham. It's not mine, it's their recipe. I'm just recreating it here in this wonderful setting. There we go. So I just need a few minutes to put this dish together so we can taste and compare. How long is that going to take now? It'll take another five minutes. Folks are at the ready. Proof in the pudding is always in the eating. VJ, yes. may I taste yours please? Please. Thank you. It does look really good and it smelled good whilst you've been cooking that. Oh, that one leaf. Mm. First thing come through is a little salt. Mm -hmm. Then I've got the fish. Now I've got the spices. That's a lovely balance. Great. Have a taste of mine, VJ. Yes. Have a little taste. That's nice. See what you think. Really nice. You like that? Yeah. What are you getting? What flavors? It's a very nice combination of prawns with coconut and very mildly spiced. Great. Mm. Mildly spiced? You find yes. that mild? Yes. Mouth's when burning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you compare it with the uh, fish, curry or the traditional dishes what we make, I think it is medium spiced yeah. but good. The combination is really good. You get the heat, but you don't lose the flavour of the prawn. Exactly. From my point of view, that's very yes. important. And I just love coconut anyway. Yes. And the coconut is uh, actually soothing the spice. So that's why it's uh, not overpowering. It's a very nice combination which you have got. Excellent. Really. I think I should learn the recipe from you. <laughs> you <Go in. laughs> see that? What high praise for Birmingham. <laughs> Another location, another curry. One that I found quite hot, as expected, quite up front on the pepper, but nonetheless very enjoyable. The people are lovely around here and the city is extremely diverse. I am now looking forward to the next one.